Hey everyone, my name is Murray, welcome to the video. In the previous couple of videos, a lot of people have been asking how I applied the glowing lines effect to the fish. Um, so I figured I'm gonna show you how to apply the glowing lines to different objects in, in your videos. Um, and uh, yeah, just cause a lot of people have been asking about it. I'm also a little more presentable now than I was a month ago. I got my hair cut, so that's pretty cool. Um, but without further ado, let's jump in. But first, intro. Roll the intro, come on. All right, so here we are in After Effects and uh, I'm having to redo this because I lost the original screen recording of me doing the whole tutorial. So I'm just doing it all over again because I couldn't recover the footage. I tried a whole bunch of stuff. So hopefully this does go out on Monday, but if it doesn't, hopefully you can kind of forgive me for that and understand why. And before we jump in, just consider subscribing, stick around. I do put a lot of time into my tutorials, so that would really be appreciated. But let's get started. So I have my composition set up in 1920 by 1080. And you can see I brought up my audio levels here. I can just double click the L key on my keyboard and it'll show me the waveform. Uh, I can also just undo this here and it'll show the audio. I can undo the audio and it'll show the waveform. So I'm simply just doing that because this is a full and a real take. So that way I know the timing and it also on top of the video that I'm watching, I know when to do the effects. So the first thing I'm gonna start out with is the fish. It's been highly requested, so I'm gonna get that out of the way first so that maybe that's what, you, what you're here for. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new solid and just make sure that it's black, that's important. I'm gonna click OK. Next thing is I'm going to just drag my fish in. Uh, I just did some research, found the same fish I did last time I did in the previous video. So I'm just gonna drag that in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the black solid that I created. And I'm going to make sure it's selected and I'm going to trace with the pen tool. I can grab it up over here. I'm just going to zoom in so I can see. I'm going to trace the fish and for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to take too much time in detail, but the more detail you take, uh, sorry, the more attention to detail you take, the better it's going to look. So if, just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to do a quick draft and I'm probably going to speed up the video as well, just for your convenience. So once I've got the basic body shape, I'm also gonna do the fins. And uh, this can also be different. You might wanna do a different animal or even a different object, different shapes. So one quick trick here to note is that sometimes I can't place another key here because of this next mask here. So what I would do is I just click and whilst I'm still holding it, I can hold the space bar and I can move the mask. So that way I can move it right onto the same line. That just avoids any thick lines in the future and you'll understand what I mean about that in a minute. And then with the tail here, one neat trick you can do is when I click and drag, it's gonna create a bezier essentially. And then with it still, with I'm still holding it, I'm going to hold the Alt key and I can move the other tab thing. I don't quite know what you wanna call it. And I'm gonna just drag it down and then let go. And then I'm gonna complete the mask. And so you can see it's done kind of like this half moon shape kind of thing which is what i'm looking for and it just adds some nice cool stuff to it so i'm going to do the same thing here and then i'm just going to cover it up uh, complete the the mask reason being is if i don't do it so if i click and drag and then try and close it up it does this weird oval which is not what i'm looking for so i'm just going to undo that and i'm just going to draw another one hold alt and then drag it back and then with the eye, I'm just going to go ahead and click and hold here and I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool. And with the tool right in the middle of the circle, I'm going to hold the shift and the control key. That way it makes a, a perfect circle and it scales it right from where I started. So if I start right in the middle of the eye, if I hold shift and control, it'll make that circle perfect and it'll also scale it from where I started drawing. So I'm going to create one there. I'm going to create another one around the eye. Okay, so with the fish done, I'm just going to go back to my selection tool at the top here. What I can do now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm going to do it just to avoid any issues in the future. I'm just going to select all my masks and set them to none. And then I can just hide that. So once I turn this back on, you can see the whole shape of the masks. I'm going to hide the fish underneath 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect Saber. Now this is a third party plugin by Video Copilot. It is free. I'll leave the link in the description. I'm going to drag it onto here. And if I just zoom back out here, you can see that it's got the Saber plugin here, but obviously it's not on the fish. So what I'm going to do is in the customized core, I'm going to go to Saber and I'm actually going to do layer masks. That way it's applied to the masks that are on the layer. Now you can tweak the settings here. Let me just first go down to the one that I want here. Let's go with neon. So that's kind of just the look I'm going to get. Let's just change the color to whatever we want. Let's say, let's say it's a good color we want. All right. And uh, let's just turn the glow intensity down because it's quite high. And we can also turn the glow speed down, which would also reduce the kind of glow. I don't know which one to call it. And the bias will also reduce that as well. Let's reduce the core size just to make it a bit smaller, just to make sure that the core isn't so obvious and blown out and connected like these two lines here were connected because it was too big. So I can reduce that. Now it just depends on your situation to mess around with these settings, kind of get it the way you want it to look. Next thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to scale it down. So if I press S on the keyboard, I'll scale that down. And uh, I'll also change the mat to screen. That way it shows everything behind it. I'm going to hide the layers with this button here, toggle masks. That way I can see the fish nice. Now, it's not the same color as before, but that's because I had to re-record this whole tutorial as the original screen recording and tutorial. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pre-compose this layer. I'm going to right click on it or I can do control shift C. Now I can obviously call it whatever I want and I'm going to move all attributes to the new composition and I'm click OK. And again, it does the black here. I'm just going to set that to screen again. Next thing I'm going to do is grab the puppet tool over here. A lot of people had this question of how I made the fish kind of bend as it came out of the water. This is how I do it. So create a point here. I'm going to create a point on the tail and in the middle of the body. So when I move it, you can see it kind of does this little thing as if it's kind of flopping around so and you can make it swim whatever you want so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drag it up a bit and i'm probably just going to leave it like that because i'm not going to need to change it that much it's not going to be on screen for very long what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the rotation the position and i'm going to have the scale just in case i adjust the scale so i'm going to go into time see where i want it so i look about here so this is about where I want the fish to disappear is when I just look. So I'm going to drag the fish here. I'm going to rotate it. I can press the W key and I can rotate it. Let's make it go down like that. And uh, I'm just going to click the scale, rotation and position keyframes. I'm going to drag it well below the table because I don't want the glow to show up through the mask because I'm going to have to mask this out as well. That way it disappears into the table as if it's jumping into water. The same thing with the jumping out and I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm just going to adjust the rotation a bit more. That way it's coming down into the table. Let's just adjust that a bit. There we go. So it kind of jumps into the water like that. I'm going to take it down to about there. That will save me some time. I won't have to adjust it later when I mask and realize the glow is coming through the mask. That'll make more sense in just a minute. So I'm going to go back into time. Let's just start maybe over here and I can always adjust it. I'm going to adjust the rotation again as if it's jumping out of the water this time. And then I've got these little tabs here so I can adjust the path of the where the fish kind of jumps. So I'm going to do it on both here. Move it in the shape of an arc or a semicircle. That way it jumps out of the water and back in. So if you take a look here, you can see it jumps kind of like that. Now I have to adjust the rotation real quick. So I go down to this keyframe. I'm going to adjust the rotation even more. Let's go back. That looks okay. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to keep it like that. But usually I would pay a lot more attention to detail. One thing I want to note is that the fish isn't quite in the center of the anchor point here. So I'm just going to go into that composition. I'm going to drag it down a little bit just because we use the puppet tool to kind of distort it a little bit. Let's go and do it a bit more. Okay, so it's about in the same in the middle of the, the fish. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And uh, I'm going to adjust the rotation here a little bit as well. All right, so that's looking good. I'm not too worried about what it looks down here because it's gonna, the mask is going to be over here covering it when it jumps into the table. So that looks pretty decent. Let's rotate it just a bit more. 
Okay, and then let's just take and take a look and see how long it takes to do this effect. Okay, so that's a pretty decent amount of time. One thing I did not mention just now is that the mask is going to be over here hiding the fish and the fish clearly is going to show through the mask. So I'm going to have to adjust the position more. I'm going to take it down here and drag that up a bit. And I might have to adjust this in time a little bit to give it some more screen time. Let's check that again. Okay, that looks pretty decent. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to keep going. So the next thing I'm going to do is find the point where I want the fish to come out of the table. I'm just going to use this mat as a guide essentially. So this, this uh, plate mat, I'm going to create a mask on this layer to hide the fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background, drag it on top. I'm going to get the pen tool, which is up here. I'm going to draw along the mat here. I'm going to draw along the other mat as well to use that as a reference. And then I'm going to go out. So I'm just going to cover the rest of that. And I'm going to do my arm as well because I believe the fish is on my arm a little bit. Let's just adjust that. There we go. And we will complete the mask. Now, this one thing that you might note here is you can see that there's a bit of the glow right over here right before the fish comes out. That's important that you don't have that when you're at your first keyframe here because you don't want the glow to show through. Only until the fish comes through you want that glow to show up. But let's just go down. Okay, so it looks good jumping out of the water and then jumping back in. Let's just add a feather to the mask. So click F on the keyboard. I'm gonna just take it to maybe three and let's just go up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Jumping in and out of the water. Okay, so let's let's take a look and see what it looks like in real time. Pretty nice. And I look at the exact right time just to, to the point where I miss the fish. Very nice. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly breeze through this next effect because I have done it in the past. I will put a tutorial into the top right in the card so that you can see what this tutorial is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock all of these so I don't mess with the wrong one. I'm going to unlock the background. I'm going to duplicate it with control D. I'm going to drag it to the top just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to double click on it. That'll bring up this other window. This is the layer window. This is the composition window. I have done a tutorial on this in the past. So I'm going to quickly breeze through it. This is just the glowing lines effect is what I like to call it, but that's not an official term. I'm going to zoom in here. And with my brush at about, let's see, my brushes are here. And with my brush tool selected, I'm going to make sure this is on single frame, RGBA and normal. You won't be playing around with any of the other stuff here. And if you don't see your brushes over here, you can just go to window and you can go to brushes. Make sure that's open. I'm going to have the diameter at three, angle at zero, roundness at 100%, hardness 100% spacing at four that's totally fine so you can adjust the diameter if you want to so this is how thick three is you can see how big it can get uh, i'm going to keep it at three just because that's a somewhat realistic feel i think all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add like a water ripple as the fish comes out the water so let's do maybe like this and i'm going to drag it underneath the fish just so that i can see it so let's Let's undo that real quick and drag it underneath the fish. And I'm just going to do that ripple again. I'm going to show the layer just to, so I can see it. You can see here and I'm just going to keep drawing the ripples and I'm just going to hide this top layer for a second just so I can see what's going on. I'll show that in just a minute. So then I go down a frame with page, using page up and page down, make the ripples a bit bigger, I guess. And then they dissipate over time. And then I go down and I do the same thing for here. Let's do a ripple here. All right, and once I've done those ripples, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show that layer again, the one that has the mask on it. I'm gonna drag this original one back up, the one that I have this effect to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to go to the effects and presets, grab the glow effect. I'm gonna apply it to this layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle down, go to the effects, go to the paint, and I'm going to make sure paint on transparent is on. That way it shows everything in the fish here. And the, the glow effect is only applied to this 
drawing that I've done. It doesn't affect the layer underneath. If I turn it off, you can see the glow effect is affecting me as well. So I'm going to turn that on, make sure it only affects this. And let's just change the color to, let's just go with the blue for the water. I'm also going to make sure my color channels are on alpha and the glow operation. You can change this to whatever you want. Let's just go to lighten for a second and adjust these. In fact, I'm going to put it on none and you can change these settings to whatever you like and you can kind of get the look you like and you can also mess around with these to see how it changes the look of the final result. Once you're happy with the look, you can close the layer tab. You won't be using that anymore. And then you can also minimize this. So if you take a quick preview, you can see it does some water effect. Now, the water effect doesn't look that great in this example. I'm just trying to go through it for the sake of speed. But when you do yours, just make sure you pay attention to the details. And then with the aeroplane, it's pretty much the same process. And again, I'm going to create a new solid and it's going to be black. And with this selected, I'm going to hide it, grab the pen tool, and I'm just going to trace over the aeroplane so that I can get a nice look of the aeroplane. All right, once I've drawn out my kind of layer here, I'm just going to hide the aeroplane. And I'm also just going to grab the Saber Tut plugin again, put that on, and I'm just going to go to the customized core. And I'm just going to do layer masks. Let's just say I'm happy with that look. I'm just going to scale it down. And when you scale it down, just make sure you do the actual masks. So you can double click on any of these points and then you can just scale the whole thing down and just hold shift to keep the proportions even. All right, then I just 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 the settings here and I'm just going to make it, let's say orange, just cause I like that color, I guess. Again, I'm just going to do screen. That way it just shows everything behind it. And yeah, it's pretty rough, but that's okay. I did it pretty quick. So then I'm just going to adjust the position. So press P on the keyboard, keyframe it. Let's just take it down to here. I'm actually going to make it a bit smaller. Okay. And so next thing I'm going to do is with this selected, I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to drag it down underneath the phone. I'm going to drag it fairly down because I don't want the glow to come through again like before. I'm going to drag it up all the way out of the frame here and I'm also actually going to rotate it so I'm going to press shift and R to get the rotation as well just going to drag it to that first keyframe and I'm just going to rotate it as well I'm going to drag the anchor point I can press Y on the keyboard or here's my anchor point tool just going to take it to the middle of the airplane again I've got these tabs here so I can add some curve to the path of the airplane that way it looks like that and it doesn't just go in a straight line i'm just going to pre-compose that Control shift c or you can right click on it pre-compose it and i'm just going to do screen again and then i'm just going to go down here just like that and once that's done you can see that the mask is kind of hiding the airplane as it comes through the phone and then goes out so that's nice one little thing i added in the final result was I actually created a new adjustment layer and I also added the optical flares from Video Copilot. Now this is a paid plugin, but it's definitely very worth it. You can drag it onto the adjustment layer and you can adjust it, go to the options here. Let's go with light and let's just select this one and let's just make the color slightly similar to the airplane. Let's just do that for the sake of the example and I'm just going to do OK. Next thing I'm just going to do is do screen on the actual layer. That way it shows everything and you can see it's obviously very bright. So I'm going to turn the brightness down and what I can do is when I keyframe this by pressing the stopwatch on the position. If I go here and I press U twice, I can show the keyframe. Now let's just go to the beginning here. Let's start over here where the middle of the airplane is shown. And I'm just going to drag that over here. Now I'm just going to go a few keyframes forward and I'm just going to drag it there. This is just keyframing. All right. And so that looks pretty good. It's going to be going pretty fast so you won't notice. But right here, I'm going to also adjust the brightness with the keyframing. So right here, it's going to appear. But if I go one frame back, I'm going to turn the brightness to zero 
That way when the airplane shows through, then you see the, the light. And so as it goes, when it goes through and out of frame, I'm going to adjust the keyframe again. So with the brightness, I'm gonna add a keyframe over here, go down two keyframes, and I'm just gonna take it to zero. That's some nice flair to it. So that was a little bit of a long tutorial, but I had to re-record it because I lost all that footage. So yeah, that was a tough one, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, here's the outro. But that's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed and you're new, consider subscribing, stick around for that. Do a lot of visual effects, editing, Premiere Pro, After Effects, streaming, uh, gear, studios, stuff like that. So leave a like, it would really help the channel out. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting. Finally got you, stupid fish. Jeez. Uh -uh -uh. Stuff that happens in my house.